We all know the story, the famous story of Beethoven's broken metronome. I have made a video on that in a very long past as the Schumann metronome was not functioning well. And actually, if you think about it, it's weird that the story like that gets so much confirmation because if you think about it, there were perhaps thousands, ten thousands of metronomes, hundreds if not thousands of composers and musicians were using that. And so during a period of 50, 60, 70 years, there is an entire population, two, three, four generations that have used a device that didn't work properly. So, and I thought the best thing I can do to you to show that this story is without any ground whatsoever is showing you my metronome here. Those, obviously this is the 19th century metronome. This is a digital one in case you wouldn't notice that. What I will do today is just let the metronome give some tempi and just compare it to the digital app. This metronome was functioning just fine in all speeds and recently for the last few months it decided to just let me down a little bit. If you play it or if you have it work in the slow speeds you will see that the spring is not able anymore to give enough energy to keep the movement or keep the, the rod ticking. So you will have a few ticks and then it's over. So hence the title, that's my broken metronome. So here we have a device that has a very weak spring. If I go down for some faster speeds, I think from 60, it's still fine. And it will be, it will keep ticking for a few minutes like that. In case any of you do not know how to operate a metronome, it's actually very simple. So you have here a rod, you have here these little lines. So you hear this clicking. Every time you hear a click, this little weight, the upper side of that is matching kind of exactly a line that's written here on the scale. And so you can basically decide your tempo. So I have here a tempo of 120. And let's see if we can match the digital metronome to that. So 120 also here. Let's see if we can start simultaneously synchronize this. The other way around is much simpler. As you will notice, it's pretty close. Of course, there is a little, I mean, for a few ticks, they go really synchronized, they synchronize really completely, like. And there, there's this little deviation, of course. You could say that this is 120 accurate. You could say that the metronome is sticking like in 119.4 or 120.5. I mean, but that's of course not a difference that, that would keep us awake. That's pretty close, I would say. Let's go to another tempo. Like 88. Let's go here to 88. pretty close to me. I mean, we are comparing now a device that's been built like around 1850, 1860, I'm not sure of the date of construction, but it's mid 19th century, to a digital app. And now it's get, getting a little bit off, but still it's the same tempo. And they're, they're aligned again. Okay, let's try another tempo. Go a little bit faster. We like fast tempo, don't we? 160. I'm going to put the metronome here, 160. 160. There you are. There we go. So for a metronome with a very weak spring, it could fall under the category broken metronome. You would not buy this from a shop. I mean, obviously you want to have a metronome then that gives all the tempi. 
it's pretty accurate. Okay, just one more to close. Let's see if it still can have 60. That will be difficult for... Okay, there we go. 60 is still possible. So 60, that's the second. Oh, let's end with the 138. What a magical temple. We cannot escape the 138 of the homoglyph here. There we go. 60. I mean, whatever difference there would be, it's, it can never be essential, so. Okay, and then the 138 of the Hamaclavio Sonata to see if that works. And if that works, I think we can be pretty convinced, all of us, that metronomes in the 19th century worked just fine. And I, I, I'll explain you in a minute why this is by default, by definition. This is pretty amazing, actually. So, the reason why, I'm, why metronomes can never be um, wrong in giving the tempo is because you have the indication here on the scale. The only thing that can be wrong is just this indication. So, if these little lines that are carved into into this metal bar, if these are wrong, then you potentially have a wrong tempo. But even then, the difference would be like just for, I mean, how, how much difference can there be? You would, if, if you see here, for instance, we're talking from 88 to, what's the next, 92 probably, yes, 88 to 92, so that's just a few millimeters. So imagine that this, this scale is wrong or just is not really accurate you would talk about a tempo instead of 88 giving 89 at maximum so and for this device for this metronome it's not the case i cannot speak for beethoven's or schumann's or chopin's but there were mass produced machines you know and the reason that they cannot be off is that the tempo that that this this this, this rot is giving is this is defined by this weight and this counterweight that's the amazing uh, invention here so by adding uh, by having two weights instead of one which a pendulum has this device is able to give much slower tempi than a pendulum would with much less height or much less length needed. If you would have a pendulum to give like 60, the second, you would need a pendulum with a length of one meter. And if you go below 60, then it's not just, if you go from 60 to 30, it's not just doubling the length. It's like a, a scale that I, I'm not, I'm not a, phys a physicist. So, but it's like meters of rope you would need to give slow tempi. And that is, of course, the unique invention of the, of the metronome. It's such a small device, you have a tempo scale. Now, in the modern, uh, somewhat later 19th century metronomes, from 40 to 208, in the days of Beethoven, from 50 to 160. And that was an amazing invention. It's beyond my comprehension. I have to honestly admit that this eve and this story of the broken metronome circles still in like serious academic uh, midst on that of people who talk about these early tempo, tempi uh, that were given by people, by composers like Beethoven, uh, Schumann, Mendelssohn, Chopin, you name it, because it's the easiest thing to think about that this cannot be true. So I hope to have convinced you once and for all that the story of the broken metronome simply does not hold and is something, if you hear somebody talk about it, you should refer to this video or just demonstrate it yourself with a metronome if you own one. So, and if you use this metronome, if you're going to use, if you have used the metronome, if you plan to use whatever, leave that in the comment section. I'm looking forward to reading that. 
And so for now, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want to support the platform that we are building, this platform slowly becomes an arts organization, which I really like, at least that idea. It's not about we win this anymore alone. So there is a way to support this and to help build this platform through our Patreon page. There's a link here and in the description box. Thank you for watching and see you soon again. Bye.